Welcome to you. Welcome to Health Matter. And I'll be saying good morning once again because it feels good to be here. And it feels better to even know you are there because now your own way did they go on and the ginger house. Now you be the reason why we did here. And we're not there alone. We're there with a certified medical practitioner, a, med a medical consultant, um, CEO, Grace Valley. Uh, we we be say don't they lectures on so many things as far as health they concern, and today with the kaya kaya go look another thing, but not my mouth mm -hmm. you go hear that one. Slimy, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Chief. Bart, good morning. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, sir. I'm happy to be back today. Happy to yeah. have you around. It's always a good one for us to have you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, How are you looking good? Ah, I was, but I'm fine. <laughs> okay, carry us good today. Ah. Okay, good morning, viewers at home and around the world. My name is Dr. Bath. I'm the medical director of Grace Valley Medical Center. But before we go to, uh, we we'll go over to today's topic, which of course is male infertility. I want to pay a special homage, a special thank you okay. to Dr. Stella Alagbe, yeah. who was with Our us last, last week. Last week, Saturday. Okay. So if you're watching, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming. Okay. So today we'll be looking at male infertility. Okay. Usually. When a couple is unable, uh, infertility can be defined as inability of a couple, non contraceptive couple, to achieve pregnancy over a period of one year with adequate sexual exposure. Okay, but when male factor is the cause, we refer to it as male, male infertility. infertility. By the same token, there is female infertility, but this morning we'll be concentrating on male infertility, is a topic we started. Uh, uh, some weeks back, okay? Now, male infertility can also be looked in another way. The inability of a male to cause conception or pregnancy in a fertile female, okay? Usually, we don't start talking about infertility until after the couple must have lived for at least a period of one year, okay, with adequate sexual exposure. When we talk about adequacy in sexual exposure, we are talking about Coital exposure, okay, for not more, for at least nothing less than three times per week, okay. So this morning we are going to look at a number of uh, uh, what causes male infertility. We are going to look at signs and symptoms of male infertility. We are going to de describe uh, and give definition to a number of medical terminologies that we usually hear about when we talk about infertility. Okay. We are going to look at the presentation, the diagnosis. Okay, if time permits, we can go as far as doing the treatment today, okay, and as well as touch on some other areas that we have spoken about when we started this topic. Now, looking at male infertility, over the world, it is a global challenge, okay. It's being said that 12 to 15 percent of couples are affected all over the world. Some studies say one out of every six couples have challenges with infertility, okay. Um, in, in the U.S., it's, it's, it's being said that about 8 million Americans are affected by this scourge. So it's actually a problem that affects or has global affectation. Now, I want us to look at some terminologies that will help us to understand male infertility. Number one, it has to do with production, transportation, and movement of sperm. Okay. Now, but before I go into that, I also want to make a, def uh, uh, make a definition or a differentiation between semen and sperm. So that when we mention sperm and when we mention semen, mm. people, <coughs> our viewers at home can actually understand what we mean by that. Okay. Mm. Now, sperm are usually produced in the testicles. Okay. As a matter of fact, let me, let me actually do a physiology of what sperm production is all about that will help us because of the medical jargons that we may be using <laughs> along the line. Now, the testicles has three cells. The testis has three cells. Okay, when we talk about the testis, we're talking about the gonad. Okay, it has three cells that are usually involved in spermiogenesis and, produ and production of testosterone, which is the male sex hormone. Now, those cells are called Leydig cells, Sertoli cells. And germ cells. Now, these cells, these cells have an interaction 
or a complex mechanism that are oftentimes starts from the brain. Okay, so that will lead us to what we refer to as hypothalamic pituitary gonadal okay. axis. Hypothalamus <laughs> is in the brain. So long. Pituitary gland, you have the anterior and posterior pituitary gland, gland. <laughs> is equally in the brain. Okay, and the gonads, <clears throat> we are talking about testes in the males and ovaries in the female. Now, this axis has an interplay, okay, that affects the cells of the testicles. So, the, uh, this axis actually produces gonadotrophin releasing hormone. This hormone brings about the secretion of FSH, follicle sti stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone, usually from the anterior pituitary gland. These two group of hormones can equally be found also in the females. Okay, now the lady cell has a form of interaction with the luteinizing hormone and brings about the production of testosterone. Mm. Why the FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, has an interaction, okay, that happens with the Sertoli cells, bringing about spermatogenesis, okay, that's the production of sperm. Okay, so now the sperm is actually being produced in the testicles. When it is produced at the testicles, it is not yet semen. Okay. After the production of the sperm within the testicles, it needs to be squeezed out of the testicles okay. towards the base of the penis. Okay? When it gets towards the base of the penis, in sexual encounter, that is what happens, or that is what is obtainable. Okay, so these sperm that are produced and stored within the testicles, okay, by the seminiferous tubules, the uh, vast difference and the epidem epi epididymis and all whatnot stored in the testicles. So during sexual exc excitation or stimulation, during ejaculation, these sperm are pushed out into the base of the penis. It's still sperm at this stage. At the base of the penis, <coughs> you have some other organs, accessory organs that are found there, talking about the seminal vesicle as well as the prostate. So the seminal vesicle will inject some secretions into this sperm that has emerged from the, from the uh, testicles or the testes, if you like. The prostate gland, too, will squeeze some uh, uh, fluid into it. It's at this stage that it becomes semen. semen. So that when a man ejaculates, what comes out is semen, and the sperm is contained within the semen. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to take it a little bit backwards. The uh, erection is controlled by the parasympathetic aspect of the nervous system, okay, while the emission and ejaculation are controlled by the sympathetic uh, uh, part of the central nervous system. I'm okay? sorry, sorry, sir, just asking. I thought the erection will have to do more with the testosterone now because I think that's what's uh, uh, responsible for sexual activities. Well, we did not hear the name now mm. when it comes to the play. You mentioned it mm. at the beginning, but when it comes to how everything is now forming, I, we, didn't hear, we didn't see its activities. Yes, thank you very much for pointing out. Now, the, the testosterone is the male sex hormone, mm. okay, that is usually produced also in the testicles. Okay, so there's a, an interwoven... Uh, 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 processes mm. that involve all of these components mm. together, which of course, if I go into details, people, viewers at home, people who, don't, who may not have medical knowledge may not be able to appreciate. So okay. I'm trying to simplify them as much <coughs> as possible so that we can sir, understand. Sir, mm. before you move any further, sir, please, there are sometimes the man will feel, I'm not having urge for sex. This time around, now, it's not psychological thing, you know, you go see woman, everything go there, but in body no go move, you just feel weak, like, uh, he wishes, but his body is not there. Body is weak. Body, uh, <laughs> body, mind is weak. Flesh is. But flesh is uh, weak. He won't attain erection or anything. Sir, can we call this shortage of that testosterone? And if no. it is, is there a way they can boost it? No, I, 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 what you're trying to de describe has to do, thank you for the question, sir. Yeah, what okay. you're trying to describe has to do with libido. Libido. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the word. Okay, so sometimes if you have emotional stress, if you have psychological stress, 
it can actually affect your libido okay your sexual drive if you like okay so that's all about that now in terms of what causes infertility in the male i want us to look at it from three categories okay number Very one controlled. the pre testicular factors number two the testicular factors and number, two. number three post the post testicular, testicular factors, factors. okay, okay? So, now the pre testicular factors mm. are those factors that do not have uh, to do directly with the testes the testicular factors are the ones that have direct link with the testicles and the post testicular factors are the ones that do not have so i will start the first one okay. now the pre testicular pre testicular factors will have to do with the challenges that will affect the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis okay. anything along that line mm -hmm. will cause a problem okay and under this you could have genetic abnormalities mm. okay like Kleinefelter syndrome okay you could have uh, uh, some other autoimmune disorder cystic fibrosis celiac disease which is a form of digestive disorder that oftentimes can present uh, 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 with infertility but usually reversible okay, okay? Uh, people who uh, have issues with gluten diet usually when they stop uh, infertility returns in such a, a a scenario or a situation okay so also among the pretesticular factor you could also have hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism what it means is that this under functioning of the cells of the gonads okay or in a situation where you don't have enough uh, uh, stimulation hormones that are usually coming from this axis when you have deficiencies in those important hormones, it could suppress the FSH, it could suppress the, the LH, LH, and thereby affecting sperm production. Mm. Talking about sperm production, you could have total absence of sperm, in which case you could have esospermia. Mm. Okay? okay? And you could have insufficient sperm being produced in insufficient mm. quantity, in which case you have oligospermia. Okay, now talking about insufficiency and numbers, it, I would like to point out at this stage what is uh, taken as spam count that is within the normal range. Okay, so before now, the normal range for spam count was uh, uh, over the decades until uh, some few years ago used to be between the ne ne uh, uh, spam count of 20 million to some studies say 250 to 300 million per meal, okay, mm. in one meal, okay, from an ejaculate. Okay, but now the WHO has actually modified it to 15 million, sperm count of 15 million cells per meal to 200 mm. or a little more than that. Why now, is there anybody, reduction, mm, Why is there reduction? because it has been found out that people who have spam count that are even lower than 20 mm. have been able to father children. Wow. Doctor, is there anything like watery spam? Yes, it is. Uh, it actually has to do with oligospermia, which mm. we are coming to. Mm. Now, talking about oligospermia, when you have a sperm count that is between 10 to 15 million per meal, mm. you talk, we, talk, we are talking about mild oligospermia. Mm. Okay, so if you have a sperm count that is between 5 to 10, we are, we are talking about moderate oligospermia. Mm. If you have a sperm count that is less than 5 million, we are talking about severe oligospermia. Mm. Okay, so anything that will uh, impede the production of sperm mm -hmm. that can cause, that can make a man to be exospermic, okay, can cause infertility. Mm. Okay, I think at this junction, the doctor has mm. really said a lot, so we have to go on this chicken break. Boy. Immediately we'll come back, uh, let me go help us open the phone lines, and actually open the phone lines yourself. You go to contribute not. because now participatory show. show. So, doctor, we shall be right back, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, yes, sir.
heart matter na serious matter oh. That na why we they always get Dr. Bat Ufe Gunam every Saturday to come teach us and enlighten us on top with health matter. You fit also advertise your product and services on top with show where they help people. Terms and conditions apply, Shao. For advert placement and sponsorship, Mokuna call Stella Maris on top 070-3914-5229. Rebecca 70 Welcome back to the show. We still treat uh, uh, ejaculation matter. That is a pre-ejaculation. Uh, I mean, premature. Yes, premature <laughs> ejaculation. Uh, so, Stimmy will help us open the <clears throat> phone line as Dr. Don't do a lot in terms of uh, dissecting mm. this uh, matter. Stimmy. Okay, guys. Uh, please feel free to talk to us. Feel free to call us. 081-054-34984. Call 08173. One four seven five eight nine. As always, kill the volume on your TV set, and we are good to go. Yeah, doctor. So yeah, you thank say, you very much. Still on pre-testicular mm. courses. Mm -hmm. Those ones that are before the testes. Okay, so we have uh, what we what we usually refer to as coital disorders. Under coital disorders, you have erectile dysfunction. You have ejaculatory disorders. We have we've talked about that the last time we uh, were on those topic. Okay. Under ejaculatory disorders, you have things like retrograde ejaculation, and you also have premature ejaculation, which of course we have uh, dealt with, but not, uh, we, I don't think we went as far as treatment. But today we have an opportunity to dwell more on that, because I can tell you that after the program, I actually got a lot of call, mm. calls along that line. And mm. one of course, of course, one of the things that we're demanding is that we said so many things about premature ejaculation, but we didn't go as far as a treatment. And I know that many viewers who are watching us from a number of places who want to hear that today. Okay, so yeah. here we go again. So premature ejaculation is one of the quieter disorders that can happen and is along is within the category of pre-testicular factors that cause or that can cause infertility. Now Premature ejaculation, there is no stipulated time that uh, sexual exposure or coital exposure mm. should ideally last. Mm. Okay? okay? It so has I to do I've with. Asked, I've asked that question yeah, before. It has to do with the partners involved or the people involved. But we start talking about premature ejaculation when the partners involved feel that the timing between yeah. the uh, exposure and the uh, release or the ejaculation. Is too short to actually meet mm. their satisfaction. That could be a challenge. Problem. Oftentimes, a lot of men who have these challenges will feel incomplete, will mm. feel inadequate, yeah, sure. will feel emotionally troubled, and of, oftentimes their partners may be complaining. Okay, I got a call during the week, and somebody actually said that the wife, despite the fact that they've actually had, they have Children. three kids. Hmm. Okay, despite the fact that they actually have three kids, that the woman was threatened to quit the marriage. Mm. So you can see that it is not just about uh, mm. having children. children. Of course, it's the major part of it. Okay, but the companionship is, also, is still a very strong factor that we need to look at. He wants to feel like a woman. Sure. Obviously. That's so, what they will be telling me. Make mm. me feel like a woman. Thank you very much. So part of the things that can... Uh, one, some of the causes, we already talked about that before. Okay, it could have emotional causes. It could have physical causes. Mm. Okay, so but today we'll be looking at some of the treatment before we go back to uh, where we started. Some of the things that can be done, okay, for people who may be having this challenge is the fact that you could use a combination of treatment option, okay? Number one is counseling, okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to see uh, uh, a mental health specialist, okay. okay, alongside your partner so that you can actually open up to the person some of the challenges that you're you're having but the aspect that the mental health specialist will tackle i can tell you is the aspect that has to do with this uh, uh, uh psychogenic or the emotional aspect mm -hmm. of it okay but also the other uh techniques too that could be that could be of help for people who have these challenges we we'll refer to them as behavioral techniques there are also behavioral. some medications that can be used okay but i also want to point out that that at, at, at the moment, there's no 
uh, uh, FDA approved drugs or medications that can be used for treatment of premature ejaculation. But however, some drugs, uh, some side effects of drugs have benefited a number of people along this line. And of course, doctors usually prescribe it. Mm -hmm. so, but let's start with behavioral changes. One of the things that you could do to help you if you're having a challenge, if you're having the problem of premature ejaculation, is to do what we refer to as pelvic floor muzzle exercises. Pelvic, pelvic floor, floor muzzle, muzzle exercises, the so-called Kegel exercises. Now Which this, Kegel? I don't know. yes, Kegel is spelled K-E-G-E-L. Okay. We have is favor is from Abia. We have to demonstrate. It. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Ke uh, my <laughs> favor. <laughs> I think it's by driving Kegel. Yeah. Good morning, favor. <laughs> favor, are you there, dear? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Yes, our doctor there here. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, I want to ask a question. Yeah, please go ahead. What I want to ask is that, how is it that, are you still hearing me? We, we can are hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. We are with you. Yes. Why is it that, I have three kids, and the three of them, none of them resemble my husband. They all resemble me. Hmm. Has your husband been complaining? Hey. Uh, stop complaining. Why is she the one to do with them going? She has a strong gene. She's our last boy. You say what? 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 Okay, let's see if doctor has an answer for that. Let's just hear what he's talking about. Yes. You know, this good. thing causes a lot of problems. I'm sure it's bugging her. That's why she's asking. Because some people, when they come and visit you, the husband might not be, ah, I'm going to enjoy your work. Are you sure you're doing that? Are you sure you're responsible? <laughs> well, really? I'm, I'm happy that question is coming from a woman. Uh, okay, so of course that settles every other thing. That solves all other problems. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to do any further additions to it. Okay, if, uh, if it was a man who was asking uh, my children don't Obviously. resemble men, mm -hmm. you, you can add a lot of things mm -hmm. to it. But I think it has to do with once with the genetic mm -hmm. makeup of the uh, of the couple that are involved. Okay, so there's no um it, it has to do with the genetic makeup, really, okay, who the child looks after, whether the father or the or mother. The mother. So oftentimes we see a, a lot of that um, among people, when you have a Caucasian, a white person mm. getting married mm. to a black, mm -hmm. oftentimes you see mm. children that will be, wow, should this be from her yeah. uh, and all that. But of course it has to do with genes, yeah. okay, sure, that's strong. the answer I have for that. Mm. Okay, so back to the Kegel exercise uh, <coughs> that uh, we talked about briefly before her question came in. Now, I also want to point out that this Kegel exercises, okay, it was actually named um, after the man that invented it in 1948, Arnold Kegel. It has benefited women immensely in that the laxity that comes with childbirth oftentimes will cause urinary incontinence. Okay, so it's an exercise that a number of women who have been uh, who have had deliveries have been using and it benefits them. It's also an exercise that somebody who has, a man who has challenges with uh, urinary incontinence as a result of uh, having undergone uh, prostatic or mm. prostate surgery can actually do. But this exercise also helps in the treatment of premature ejaculation. Now, essentially what you do is that I may not be able to demonstrate the exercise, but I will say one of the Maybe you can just explain. <laughs> yes, I will explain. Okay but if you want to hear more about the exercise, you can actually Google Kegel exercise. You can see the demonstration yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can see a number of that. Friend. But now, what you can do is when you're urinating, when you're passing urine, some of the things that can stretch the pelvic muscle is that midstream, you try to catch the urine and then hold. stop it. Hold it as much as you can and then let go again. Mm -hmm. Hold it as much as you can and then let go again. Those are some of the exercises that can stretching the, the pelvic muscles. It's not muscles. going to spoil okay. somebody's bladder. No, it's not going to do It doesn't bring any pain, doctor. It doesn't bring any pain. So when you do it on a regular basis, it helps to strengthen your pelvic mm. muscles floor muscles. Okay. Some other things that can also be used in the treatment of premature ejaculation mm -hmm. is the use of a uh, uh, special type of condoms, okay, that usually contain non agent like lidocaine, okay, or mm -hmm. condoms that are made of thicker lattice, lattice mm -hmm. that are a bit thicker. It also helps to 
delay ejaculation in people who have this challenge. Okay. This special condom you made mention, sir, is in the pharmacy. Yes, you can buy it over the counter. You can buy it in the pharmacy if you just ask them for, uh, for such. Of, of course, I won't be able to mention mm -hmm. brand names. Okay. So, but you can if you ask them, they will give you such condoms. So it does exist. Mm -hmm. Also, the use of local anesthetic agents too mm -hmm. can be helpful. These are like cream that you can actually apply on your uh, penis okay. 10 to 15 minutes before commencement of uh, uh, coital exposure or sexual encounter. Now, what that means is that it reduces the sensitivity. Mm. Okay, so when you're in the act, that helps to delay the ejaculation. Okay, other things too that could be helpful too is what we refer to as the, the post squeeze method or the post squeeze technique. Squeeze. Post squeeze technique. Now, essentially, yes, one. we're talking about behavioral mm. uh, 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 mechanisms mm. or, or techniques that could help. Now, the post squeeze uh, 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 technique essentially has to do with uh, um, a couple when they're in the act of coital exposure. When the man thinks that he's at the level of uh, 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 ejaculating, or yes, easy. ejaculation, what the partner can do is to hold to bring out the, uh, the, the phallus and then try to compress the head of the phallus and hold it momentarily until the feeling of ejaculation goes from the man. Now this can be done repeatedly until the man gets accu accustomed to it or gets used to it. Also, in people who may experience pain with such method, you can also do the stop and start technique mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so these are things that you can learn over time. Okay, to help you. Now the stop and the, the stop and start technique essentially what it has it has to do with when you're in the art of coital exposure, when you feel you are about hitting the roof, you seize momentarily for a while, okay, onto the feeling of that feeling of uh, wanting to ejaculation Good. goes away and then you can continue again. So enough of what we can do on premature ejaculation so that we can look at some other causes of pre-testicular causes of uh, male infertility. Okay, so we have things under that. We have other things like um, pituitary gland tumors, infiltrative diseases like sarcoidosis. Okay, these tumors that affect the pituitary gland can actually cause hormonal imbalance, which can actually lead to male infertility. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to testicular causes of male infertility. Testicular causes of male infertility, you have the systemic diseases, okay, and you have tes testicular injury. Under systemic diseases, you have things like chronic renal failure or mm. chronic kidney failure that can cause erectile dysfunction. You have liver failure that can mm -hmm. cause erectile dysfunction. You have HIV too can cause erectile dysfunction, okay. Infection. Mm. that affects the, uh, the testicles or the testes. We call them orchitis. Okay? Orchitis. Okay, or sometimes that affects the epididymis, epididymo orchitis. Okay. That orchitis. Those can equally cause, can affect the testes. Okay, so still under testicular causes. Testicular injuries too, that can occur as a result of surgery, torsion, or people who have had surgeries before. Okay, we have Helen from Lagos. Helen, good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning ma. Ellie. You need to turn down the volume on your TV set so that we can hey, enjoy ourselves. Okay. Good morning. Good turn morning. down the volume on your TV set first, please. Hey, my question, eh? Go ahead. Okay, I think I'm Hello. Okay, now feel now. free. Go on. Mama and Kechi. Uh, my question goes like this. Okay. Is my pro my pro problem eh, if I used to have a female? Hello. We can hear you. with you. I used to have uh, female children. Okay, you used to have female children. You get female children. Yeah, yeah Kechi. <laughs> That's why I <laughs> Doctor, Doctor I've heard most times. Yes, this is a very sensitive question. 
Yankee Chief, they watch us. I hope I'm speaking your mind. We've had so it's many It's not times. Yankee it's Helen. Her name it. is Helen. She called Keshi. The doctor's name is Keshi. Okay. I'm okay. a doctor. He called Keshi. He did the You guys are not getting the bomb. So now Keshi. Now my question is, many a time we've heard where uh, people say, if they born, get, get, get. If you want born boy, there are yeah, some, some medical, beer, yeah. medical now, medical mm -hmm. way out. Yeah. Some people say, um, um, there are some injections they will give. We've had a lot, but you can demystify this. Medically, sir, are they really such things or it's just a so fallacy? <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to take, uh, we'll be able to take this um, some other day, okay, so that we may not deviate so much from the topic oh, we have on bring the... Okay, but I think to try to answer her question, I think what she was trying to say is that she has been Giving birth to girls. Giving birth to girls. Maybe she wants to find out what Why? is responsible yeah. for that. Mm. Okay, so but I want to also say this that oftentimes we have heard that uh back in the ages our forefathers used to beat our four mothers, okay, on account of giving them females and females and females anytime they deliver. Okay, so it's actually a man or the male that is responsible for the sex of a child, mm -hmm. not the female. Okay, so, so the female has two chromosomes, hmm. S and X chromosomes. Okay, Mr. Joseph. From Kogi. We'll come back to that. Yes. Mr. Joseph, good morning, sir. We need to We not hear your question, though. Again. Please, start all over. Uh, I have a friend that they have. Where is the young woman? The program will not move fast. We will go down. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, he said he has a friend mm -hmm. that whenever he's in the uh, situation of quite exposure, the organ goes down and he may not be able to stand. Now, essentially, uh, what, what you're asking has to do with erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. which, of course, we have treated uh, uh, many, many times in this program. Now, the erectile dysfunction could be caused by a number of things. It could be a warning sign to an undiagnosed illness in such mm -hmm. a person. It could be a warning sign that such a person may be incubating cardiovascular disease like hypertension. Person may be having diabetes without knowing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I would advise is that you should tell your friend, this is your friend, to please go and see a doctor for further mm -hmm. evaluation. It could be caused by a number of things. It could be caused by medications. Mm -hmm. If it's someone who's on drug for hypertension, mm -hmm. okay, some of them have implicated have been implicated uh, in the cause of erectile dysfunction and even infertility too. We are still going to yeah. see a whole of that. Here. Some drugs are uh, gonadotox gonadotoxic, okay. It affects the gonads and of course can affect uh, can cause abnormal production of sperm. Okay, so your friends should go to see a doctor. For further evaluation. Thank you very much. Sir, you were answering the question. You said the woman has X and X chromosomes. Yes. Woman, a, 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 every has female two. has two, two. chromosomes. Mm. Okay. X and X. Mm. Okay. While a man has one X and one Y. Mm. Okay. okay. So in a, in, a, in a situation where they meet, mm -hmm. at all times a woman must donate mm -hmm. out of what she has, yeah. okay. which is one X mm. at a time. Mm. It okay. is the man who will donate either X or mm. Y. So in a situation where man donates X, That's what results becomes be a female? female. Yes. If he donates Y, what results will be X and Y, mm. it turns out to be a male. Okay. okay, so that's what I have to say on the woman's question. Right. Okay, so still John, under... Sorry, I think John. You have John. Yeah. John, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. How are you doing, sir? You're fine, oh. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm a doctor, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah, I need to ask the doctor a question. Please, Please go ahead, ahead sir. Uh, please, and doctor, I need to ask, is there... Um, an expected time for ejaculation, like, like is there an expected time? Like, by this time, you know you are good, you are fine. Like, when it, when it comes to ejaculation, that's just my question. Are you talking about duration? Yes. Why you are duration. why yes. you are duration. copulating? Duration. Duration, Abby. Yes, yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. There, there is no uh, 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 time particular limits. time <laughs> limit. It's as much as um, your strength can actually carry you, <laughs> or your <laughs> expertise along that line can actually take you. There is no um, 
Uh, but it's one minute, not too soon. That's the problem. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what we just uh, discussed about uh, yeah. premature yeah. ejaculation. Yeah. But I must say that it depends on you and your partner. A lot of people may be okay Benio. with five minutes, may be okay with ten mm -hmm. minutes or thereabouts. Okay, so what is partner dependent? But no jokes now, doctor. No mm. jokes now. Mm. Do you know that women too, they contribute a lot in this matter? Because there are some ladies that I've seen, that I've heard, because I've not, that I've heard that they, there's a way they will play with a man and use it to help. But there are some women that, you know, so they say, I don't know, but... In, 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 in such a situation, what you can do is to improve your communication I mean, with your yeah. partner. If you yeah, improve your communication with your partner, it could so be of help. help. Yes. It yes. can actually yes. help. Okay, yes. so you may need to find out how the person wants it done mm. or what so motivates or what inspires the person. You to enjoy uh, it. Uh, mm. yes. well, we are guilty of that. Most of, most of the time, the guys are usually self-centered. Yes. They care less about the other yeah. side of the mm. of the you divide. Go, go. Mm. <laughs> ah, so <laughs> when I marry Yairi, you know say Yairi now from North. You call them say, Oh, make a first sing. He say if I sing, I will sing. I say go, then you go. I call it that Mario, Mario, Mario. You go dance that Mario, Mama. You're going, you're going Indian. <laughs> hey, now that time, you don't go to India. Funny enough, that's yeah, what yeah, makes us. My Coco calling for that Mario. So you, you don't get the answer. Say it is not a fault. It's, it's, right. it's me. So I prefer my Coco calling. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, still on that testicular causes, we have to mention Walker. varicocele because it's been said that varicocele, this varicocele is responsible it. for yeah. about 40% of people who are having challenges with infertility. Mm -hmm. Now, post-testicular causes, we have to do with those things that have to do with obstruction. Remember at the beginning we said anything that will cause infertility will have to do with, the, will affect either the production of the sperm, mm. the transportation of the sperm, or the movement mm. of the sperm. Mobility. Now, when we talk about movement of the sperm, it's not just from the testes to the exterior. Okay. It's also within the female uh, uh, system or within the female body. Is that okay, so, we are talking about mobility? Yes, motility. 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 Okay, so motility. now, some of the things that can actually cause post-testicular factors of infertility is obstruction. Now, there could be obstruction in the vast difference, spermatic cord. There could be ob obstruction in the epididymis. There could be obstruction in a number. Of, so if you have obstruction by any cause, let me also say that some of this obstruction could be congenital. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of them could be congenital, meaning that the person was born with such an obstruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you discover that some people produce enough sperm, but they don't ejaculate. Mm -hmm. Okay, in some people who produce ejaculate, ejac the ejaculation goes behind instead of forwards, which, which we refer to as retrograde, retrograde ejaculation. So if you have obstruction anywhere that can hinder the passage of the sperm or the semen that can bring about infertility. And there are a number of medical conditions that can cause such obstructions. Number one is infections, infections like chlamydia, gonorrhea, that was not properly treated in time past. Traponema pallidon, mm -hmm. okay. A number of viral infection too. Uh, human papilloma virus, hepatitis C virus, HBV, and what have you. A number of viral infection can actually cause that. Okay, so I so I also read that protozoa infection can actually play a role. Something like malaria can actually cause infertility, hmm. and I was wondering how. How that can be possible? But, the, well, but do you know where I actually agree to that? If a man treats malaria, some injection will not they give us. Doctor, I don't confirm them. If they bring serious erection. When a, yes, when a man treats malaria, the first, second injection, when you go for the third one, when you go... You, there's a way you feel serious mm -hmm. erection. I think that will be a subject for further research, sir. Because you, <laughs> yeah. you bad people, people you bad believe in it. You bad people believe in it. That's why you bad people will say when a man has malaria and he has taken the medicine, they will say, Kotoi Badanu. Mm. They will say, Look for a woman, Lati Toi okay, Badanu. Really. So there is, there is this, I don't know. There's a terrible Like Dr. Said, there is a terrible you thing. You need to inside. conduct a research. <laughs> Mary Kane, are you kidding me? Mary Kane, good morning. <laughs> good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. What yeah, is nice. very, very unique, unique name. name. <laughs> loud and clear. His voice is loud yeah. and clear. Okay, Please. doctor is here. Hello. Hello, Mary good, K, morning, good morning, sir. Please go on. Okay, okay, doctor. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. 
Um, I thank you very much for your uh, what people are doing there. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you. Yeah. What I want to get right now is this. When you are when you are on the act, if after you release, how many times will you go again? Thank you very much, sir. See, hang on. It's as much as you can. Uh, as, as much as you can. But usually, um, it's natural that when after the first ejaculation, usually it takes a while before you achieve a good erection again. It's only natural. Okay, so except in situation where uh, someone may be using uh, some yeah. some pills, yeah. some assisted uh, <laughs> medications. That's the word. Uh, I'll be feeling like this bond. Mm. Mm. But ordinarily, in a, in a natural setting, usually when you ejaculate, there will be a gap in exactly. which case, yes, yes, the, the, the erection drops a while mm -hmm. and then before you can actually pick up. But it differs from one person, but, from one person to yeah. the other. If one, could not, if one could not pick up in two hours time, is there, can we see that as a danger sign? No, it's not a danger sign. It's about an individual, individual sometimes a lot of factors will, will play a role emotional factors, psychological, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, what have you. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you don't just look at it from one binocular. Yeah. Okay, so you need to look at it from several perspectives. Thank you very much for that question, sir. So some of the other things that can actually cause this is, we've mentioned infection. Chlamydia, gonorrhea. Yes. I also like to mention some other causes, like undescended testicles, congenital malformation, we we'll call it cryptokidism, okay? You also have, I've mentioned, mumps too can actually be one of the infections that can cause those problems. We are getting signals that we should be rounding up. Well, I think, Doctor, it's uh, very important. We can pick up from here next week. It's yes. an interesting yes. topic. Thank you and, very uh, much. On top of that, we say thank you very much, our viewers. We always uh, keep on time. Lockdown date with us. We really, really appreciate. From Thank Slimmy. you very much. Yes, obviously, Slimmy is still here. She'll see you guys once yeah. or two. So, so we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Thank you guys for bye -bye. watching. Bye bye.